It recently came to my attention that the audio track for one of my favorite builds has been completely replaced by some odd music. I didn't even know that was a thing that could happen. This video is a really old one and the knife was made like four or five years ago, but I really enjoyed making it and since that video is almost a million views and I still get questions on it, I figured I'd do a better edit of it and see if I can't touch on the more burning questions that I get about this blade. This was made in my old shop. Some of you who are OG to the channel will remember it. It was a falling down garage I used to live in in the middle of nowhere after my divorce. Two years with no running water, just my forge and burning desire in my heart that I was going to build back a life only took unending determination. Let's get to the knife. This knife is a serpent knife, which is a pretty hard pattern to pull off. Your forge welds have to be 100% perfect along the boundaries or the extreme force will shear them apart. The serpent bar is generally made up of three parts. The two outside bars and the center, which becomes the serpent. You don't want these bars to be of the same material or it won't show up. You only have a few more days to enter to win this kitchen knife. The drawing will be held on April 15th. For one entry, you can subscribe to my channel and comment on this video. If you buy something from my store, your total will be more entries. And if you want 10 entries, on top of everything else, you can join my Patreon. Patreon supporters have their own playlist of extended videos as well to see, and direct contact with me for their questions. All of my links will be in the description and in the pinned comment. For this, I am taking an even harder route and making the serpent out of a twisted bar, which, when I made this knife, it was barely even heard of. Creating the motion of the serpent can easily destroy the twist's delicate star patterns. And yes, I know a twisting jig and torch would have been quicker, but like I always say, faster is not the point. The twisted bar has been squared up, and now the three bars to make the serpent are formed. Now I draw out the lines to be cut. This bar will be cut into a zigzag pattern, which will then be forged flat, making the center bar look like a twisting snake. Don't worry, it'll make sense in a moment. There are a few ways to make the serpent in the steel. All is just as hard as the other. This is my favorite way. I think you're getting why I said the forge welds have to be amazing and solid. This is a true test of someone's smithing ability. I've been doing this for 20 years. Here, you can see the serpent starting to form. Told you it would make sense. Now, just to remove the deformation of the remaining outside bars.
Now to cut out a piece of wrought iron for some nice texture for a middle bar between the serpent and the edge billet. Now to make the edge billet. Since I don't have a sponsor for today's video, I wanted to recommend my friend's business. They sent the beautiful figured purple handle that the giveaway knife is made with. Bladepoint.eu has great selections of knife making supplies from beginners up to advanced smiths. The customer service is second to none and the shipping is very fast. I've already ordered more and plan to do so in the future. Their eye for quality goods can't be matched. Their link is in my description or check out their Instagram. Bladepoint.eu. Tell them I sent you. People also ask why I use stainless steel hose clamps instead of modern molding machines, and that's because I like to keep the amount of electric tools to a minimum. It disconnects me from my work, and modern welding adds even more metal that has to be ground away. The style of tip the sacks will be, I like to stagger the bars as the ends will need to be cut down or ground off at this angle anyway. This saves material. Again, it will make sense when you see it. Now I am working down the bevels for the cutting edge. The material you see flying off is forged scale, a mix of impurities, oxidation, and a little carbon.
and a tang was never even a doubted practice until people on Forged and Fire had to make some stink about it being difficult. It's one of the easiest and quickest ways to do this. It's period correct, and it's really hard to mess up. I've been doing it for almost 20 years, and I can't think of a single time it's ever caused a problem. But the armchair smiths and know-it-alls will scream from the rooftops about it being something to avoid. Now that is a fine edge. So here it is, a fishtail serpent in the steel sacks, all hand forged. Look how nice and tight that twist pattern is. All the know-it-alls say you can't get a tight twist like that without a jig. A main reason not to listen to most people in Facebook groups. Sadly, this knife was conned for me and I consider it stolen. Where it is now, I don't know, but I do wish it would make its way home to me.